Hi everyone, my name's Laura Clark and I'm going to be talking a little bit about a study that I conducted in 2017 with Dr Julie Vandenind at Victoria University, exploring Australian singer-songwriters' perceptions and experiences of work stress. Why singer-songwriters? Uh, I am one, so I had personal interest and experience in this area. Also in listening to the songs of singer-songwriters, we often hear personal vulnerabilities and emotional wounds. The work is also often described as isolating, self-absorbed and lonely. And despite these vulnerabilities, a dearth of research explores singer-songwriters' work stress and well-being. There is some but very limited research investigating musicians and singers' work stress, um, which reveals low income, irregular work hours, mental health issues, suicidality, problematic drug and alcohol use, sleep disorders, a lack of social support and more. So my feeling was that findings for musicians and singers may give some insight into singer-songwriters' experiences. However, I also wondered if singer-songwriters would have experiences that were unique to them, different to those of musicians and singers. <clears throat> So it was an exploratory study that we conducted in 2017. It was a qualitative phenomenological study interviewing seven Australian singer songwriters. The data was then thematically analysed and initial coding showed that there were some similarities with musicians and singers, but that there were also differences. So there were also experiences that were unique to singer songwriters. Initial coding also indicated that the data may be well explained and organised using the job demands resources model. So this is a model commonly utilised by the World Health Organisation and other Australian regulatory bodies to assess workplace stress. It's a theoretical framework that focuses on positive and negative indicators of employee wellbeing and basically assumes that all occupations across all different contexts have specific job related stress factors and that these can be categorized as either job demands or job resources. So this is a brief overview of the job demands resources model. So job demands can be mental, emotional or physical and this leads to reduced health and energy which can have negative outcomes such as exhaustion, job strain and burnout. Job resources uh, include things like feeling like one has autonomy in their role, getting good support and feedback. So this, this increases motivation for work and it also acts as a buffering mechanism against these possible negative outcomes. In 2015, Parker adapted the job demands resources model for musicians and found that musicians reported a high workload, interpersonal conflict and job insecure, insecurity and career uncertainty as job demands and that these led to psychological stress. Musicians also reported job resources, including autonomy and social support though very limited resources and that they also utilized coping strategies so problem focused coping positive reappraisal and support seeking and these acted as a buffering mechanism to potential negative outcomes the outcomes that parker found for musicians were life satisfaction but also high levels of psychological distress problematic drinking behavior burnout and high intentions to leave the industry when considering the data we collected from singer songwriters, there were some similarities. So there were similar job demands. Um, singer songwriters also reported some similar resources and coping strategies and some similar outcomes. But there were things described for musicians in the literature that weren't apparent for singer songwriters and also experiences that singer songwriters described that were unique to them and not described in the literature for musicians. So having a look at the data that was collected for singer songwriters. So singer songwriters describe really high job demands and high workload, similar to musicians being one of these. So feeling like it's all encompassing and it takes up your entire life. The subcategories here that came out in the data were illegitimate tasks. So these are work tasks not associated with the core of an individual's professional identity or occupation, and they're associated with increased work stress. 
for singer songwriters, these were things like marketing, administration, promotion, bookings, social media, um, and just a sense of feeling like they were doing more admin than, than creative tasks. Also working two jobs, which were similar for musicians. So feeling like they didn't earn enough money from their singer-songwriter work. Uh, so having to have a second job and also stress came from trying to coordinate jobs versus gigs, depending on what was going to pay more. Irregular work hours also caused a lot of stress. So feeling like they had to be available 24 seven. So again, this was something that hasn't been reported in the literature for musicians. So it seems to be unique to singer songwriters and a sense that having to gig and tour as well as booking, marketing, emails, phone calls, um, just a general sense that they needed to be available for their singer songwriter work um, at all hours. Working nights and weekends, similar to musicians, um, was a high job demand that caused a lot of stress and had, had a rolling on impact, such as um, social disconnection and sleep uh, disruption, as we'll see later on. Similar to musicians, singer-songwriters reported job insecurity and uncertainty. Um, so uncertainty around career progression and also uncertainty around sales and income, uh, also around performances. Uh, and just kind of feeling like there's a lot of luck involved and that no matter how hard you work, at the end of the day, it's a bit of a lottery. Financial strain was also a job demand um, that caused stress for singer-songwriters. And so low income, this is similar to musicians, just generally feeling like they weren't paid enough for what they do. But something unique to singer-songwriters was that they also um, reported high outgoing costs. So things like insurance, equipment, recording, venue hire, posters and promotions, paying for the sound engineer. Um, and one of the participants, I think, summed up the financial strain for singer-songwriters beautifully when she sought to clarify one of the demographic questions. And she asked me, um, so say if you earn $50,000 a year and then you spend $40,000 a year on your music, are you earning $10,000 a year or are you earning $50,000 a year? And I just thought that's a beautiful summary of the, the low income and the high outgoing costs, which means ultimately a really low income. Singer songwriters also reported a toxic work culture. So just feeling like the industry is pretty ruthless and brutal. And sub themes here were competition and jealousy. Uh, so just envying others success and also this sense that it's really hard to get anywhere and achieve anything. So when you are achieving something, you kind of want to protect that and protect your slice of the pie. Um, and that you're also fighting against peers for a slice of that pie. So for example, festival spots and particular gigs. The female singer songwriters that we uh, interviewed did describe discrimination and this was gender discrimination. So intimidation, comments like you play guitar good for a girl uh, and one of the singer songwriters actually um, told a story about a colleague who was not getting a lot of gigs booked under her own name. So she uh, created a fake male manager to email about bookings and bookings increased. So there was definitely some gender discrimination noticed. Working in isolation was something that was unique to singer songwriters and not reported in the literature for musician. So just feeling like uh, even if they're working with a band, it's still their name and reputation. Uh, so kind of feeling like you're out there on your own and also that there was a generally a lack of industry support. Another unique job demand for singer songwriters was personal vulnerability. So putting their experiences and vulnerabilities out there to be judged and just feeling like it's this raw part of you that you're just bearing your soul to other people. And this made them feel quite vulnerable. Singer songwriters did report job resources as well. So despite competition and jealousy, there was a lot of peer support reported. So just that general sense that if you put two songwriters in a room, they're going to talk about how hard it is and what they're doing to get through. So there was this sense of people who have done it, get it. And they're kind of the only people who understand what I'm going through. We're in the same boat. And this camaraderie of, of every success is a success for us all. So this really great peer support, despite the competition and jealousy. 
And then intrinsic rewards of just doing the work as a singer songwriter. So never waking up and dreading having to go to work. And the subcategories here were human connection. So just feeling like they could make a difference, connecting with the crowd and that sense of when the crowd is connected with them, really living for that feeling. And then just the general joy of being a songwriter. It's just something they wanted to do. They get pure enjoyment um, from all the aspects. So performing, traveling, socializing, um, just really a love of what they do. So these were similar for musicians. Something unique for singer songwriters was this use of songwriting as a kind of self therapy. So uh, yes, they're the ones who do it all and it's very isolating, but at the same time, they're the ones who get to write the songs and the lyrics. So being able to express themselves and also feeling as though they expressed things that they might not otherwise be able to express. Um, and that this has actually helped them through mental health challenges. Uh, so other coping tools that were utilised by singer songwriters. So some had good personal support and just feeling like being with family and friends was essential. So one described this as paramount importance um, in their work as a singer songwriter. So having friends and family, um, a couple had a psychologist or other professional support. And there was this sense from a couple of the singer songwriters that there's no support anywhere else. So without this personal support, I would probably just give up. Um, interestingly, others noted that their support was um, all peer based and that they didn't have personal support and that this was something they really struggled with. Similar to musicians, singer songwriters also uh, utilised positive reappraisal. So trying to turn things into a positive, trying to adjust their attitude. Um, and there was kind of this broad theme of redefining what success looks like. And I think this quote from one of the participants really sums it up in just exactly how much they need to reappraise or readjust what success means. So um, I could be more successful, I could be more known, I could sell more records, but I'm not dead. So this is kind of the benchmark of if, if I'm alive, I'm okay. And anything on, on top of that is a bonus. So I feel like that's pretty um, explanatory of that. So what are the outcomes if we think about singer songwriters having high job demands, low resources and limited coping tools? So there were a lot of mental health issues reported. Um, so depression of differing severity, some had a diagnosis of major depressive disorder. Um, others just noticed that their mood um, would change and that sometimes they would feel down. Anxiety was also um, reported, the second most reported um, experience from the singer songwriters and also body image and eating disorder concerns came up as well. All the singer songwriters said that their mental health was linked to their creative work. So if things were going good with music, they felt good. Um, and then another, another participant noted that it's hard to look after yourself because of the demands of the job. So having to be available 24 seven, having sleep deprivation, limited finances to be able to pay for things that are going to be helpful with mental health um, impacted the ability to, to have that care for yourself. Another theme that came up was low self-worth. So one of the singer songwriters noted that they really allowed music to feel, to make them feel unworthy. And also that the envy of others came from this lack of their own self-worth. Um, and then as mentioned earlier, sleep disorders. So working weekends and working late at nights um, and just working 24 seven meant that sleep was disrupted or there just wasn't enough sleep. Um, and one of the singer songwriters noted, yes, that there is sleep deprivation and I just put up with it because it's worth it. So that's a snapshot of the job demands resources model adapted for singer songwriters with the main categories. So high job demands, low job resources, some coping tools, and that these were motivating factors or acted as a buffering mechanism. Um, but without these, there were mental health problems, low self-worth and sleep disorders were really common. So the recommendations from this study were that singer songwriters be categorized separately in future studies and not grouped with musicians given their unique experiences and that future research tests the validity of the job demands resources model, which I've adapted for singer songwriters. 
Uh, we also recommend that specialist support services be made available and in particular a national helpline phone number. So something like Lifeline, a 24 seven number for um, musicians and singer songwriters that they could call for support. And really happy to note that since this study, so in 2018, this was actually established, the Support Act Wellbeing Helpline, which is still going strong and is now available to all individuals who work in the entertainment industry. So it's just, we're really lucky via Support Act and the Arts Wellbeing Collective have really put in a lot of hard work to start establishing some of these specialist support services. And we're so lucky they're, they're doing an amazing job and we're seeing some really fantastic resources come out. Also trained counsellors and psychologists who have an interest or experience in working in this area. And it's really great to know that there is growing interest in this. So there's peer supervision happening at the moment. Organisations such as the Australian Society for Performing Arts Healthcare are seeing more mental health professionals get involved. So there, there is some interest growing here, which is great. Increased industry support would be a must. This is really difficult in a time of coronavirus, so I won't go too much into that, um, but, but will be certainly a necessity as the industry rebuilds. And also changes to music education curriculum. And what I really mean by that is for young singer songwriters and musicians to start to educate them that these are the demands that, that will, will be placed on you if you get into this work. Um, so a lot of them, the workload, the work hours, the insecurity and uncertainty, working in isolation, vulnerability, like these demands are not going to go away for singer songwriters. So it's less about trying to change some of these things and more about building in education about this type of stuff into, into curriculum and then to help young and new musicians and singer songwriters really build up these resources and these coping tools so they have the best shot at having this buffering mechanism and this motivation that's going to help to kind of outweigh some of those demands that exist. And I just wanted to finish on this quote from one of the participants who I thought really summed up beautifully the, the, the roles and the expectations as a singer songwriter. So you're expected to wear all these different hats. Um, being a songwriter is just one part of it. You have to be a performer, a socialite, a marketing expert, a web designer, a clandestine vandal putting up posters in the middle of the night. Um, so you have to be all these things simultaneously and perfectly to get the whole package together to cut through. And even then, even if you get all of those things right, you still need luck on top of it to get you over the line. So thanks so much for uh, listening to my presentation and I hope there have been some helpful things and some insight that comes from that. And um, if anybody would like to get in touch, that, that is my contact email address. Thanks so much.